Beach closed. Ground beef recall. Boil water until further notice are headlines that are all too frequently found in today's media. Sometimes these incidents are brought to our attention because people became ill after consuming food or water contaminated with bacteria. At other times, the results of testing for the presence of the bacterium Escherichia coli, often referred to as simply E. coli, has been sufficient to cause public concern. Ironically, E. coli is one of the most common bacteria inhabiting our lower intestines and the digestive systems of endotherms such as birds and mammals. We would not be able to fully digest our food without most of the strains of E. coli that inhabit our guts, but periodically there are several mutant strains, including O157H7, that arise and are pathogens that can cause extreme digestive distress, and in some cases, even death. We use E. coli as an indicator species whose abundance provides information on the overall condition of ecosystems as well as the probability that other species are present. Importantly, E. coli is a relatively easily detected bacterium that is an indicator of the likely presence of other intestinal bacterial and viral pathogens, such as Salmonella, Cholera, Shigella, and Hepatitis A. In the field, we will collect water samples from a series of sites to test the bacteriological quality of the water. Water samples for bacterial tests must be taken in a sterile fashion and must be analyzed within 24 hours after collection. So we will take samples in the field and analyze them the same afternoon in lab. The membrane filter technique that analyzes for the presence of coliform bacteria is widely used for water samples. Coliform bacteria as a group include both fecal coliforms, associated with bird and mammal digestive systems, and total coliforms that include the rod-shaped bacteria that inhabit soils and environments not associated with animal digestive tracts. After an incubation period during which bacterial cells grow and multiply in a nutrient medium, the resulting colonies appear blue or red with a metallic sheen for the total coliform bacteria and dark blue for the fecal coliform bacteria. The color arises from the interaction of a metabolite of lactose that reacts with a dye that is in the culture medium. Here is some helpful advice as you prepare your samples and plates for the coliform analysis. We are now going to prepare the plates for total and fecal coliform. Obtain a petri plate, the blue nutrient broth for total coliform, and the purple broth for fecal coliform. Label a plate with your sample name, your initials, TOT for total, and FC for fecal coliform. Open the sterile packet containing a filter membrane and a nutrient pad. Using sterile forceps, carefully place the sterile filter membrane, and not the pad, into the filtering apparatus. The membranes are quite fragile and very expensive, so be careful with this step. Place the nutrient pad into the Petri plate. Open the plastic vial of blue nutrient broth and pour it onto the pad in the total coliform Petri plate. Then do the same with the purple broth for the fecal coliform plate. Measure 10 mils or perhaps more if you have a particularly clean sample or less if you expect very many bacteria. Consult your instructor and don't forget to write down how much you use. Fill it to the 100 mil mark with sterile water. Then filter it through the prepared filter membrane. Do not turn the suction on from the pump until the sample has been poured into the filter. Otherwise, you will end up with clumps of bacteria instead of individual colonies. Turn the vacuum pump off and remove the membrane filter carefully from the apparatus and place it immediately on the nutrient pad in the petri plate. Be careful not to trap any air bubbles between the membrane and the pad.
wrap a piece of masking tape around the plate to keep it from drying out. Place the total coliform plate upside down in the 35 degree C tabletop incubator. Place the fecal coliform plate upside down in the 44.5 degree water bath. After incubating the plate for approximately 24 hours, count the number of bacterial colonies on each plate. For total coliforms, count only the red and blue colonies, no others. For fecal coliforms, count only the dark blue colonies. Each colony represents one bacterium that has grown into a colony. Thus, the dots are representative of the number of bacteria in 10 mils of sample. Multiply by 10 to report coliform counts as number of bacteria per 100 mils. If you used 50 mils of sample, then you should multiply by 2 to report coliform counts as number of bacteria per 100 mil. Be aware of what dilution factor you use. Before you leave the lab, please wash your hands.